you, it doesn't seem like it's time for ghost stories, but you are about to hear one. Our ghostly tale begins in London nearly 200 years ago. Ebenezer Scrooge is sitting in his office that he shared with his former business partner, Jacob Marley. Marley has been dead for many years. Let me say this again. Old Marley was dead as a journal. You must understand that. Scrooge's assistant, Bob Cratchit, sat at his desk, desk shivering underneath a blanket. Scrooge didn't want to put coal in the fire because it cost too much money. The door opened. Scrooge's nephew arrived at Ebenezer's office in a very good mood. He hoped that some of his Christmas cheer would rub off on him. Merry Christmas, Uncle. Christmas? Bah, humbug. Christmas is humbug, so you don't mean that. Of course I mean it. What reason do you have to be married? You're not wealthy at all. Uncle, why do you always have this? You have so much to be thankful for. I live in a world filled with fools that waste money on things they don't need. I think everybody shouting Merry Christmas should be boiled in his own pudding. Uncle, you're just saying things like that. We are having a dinner too tomorrow night. Please promise you'll come. I can't promise that. There's always work to be done. Have you ever made any money celebrating? Of course not, Uncle. I've never earned any money on the holidays, but I do think it makes me a better person to celebrate than Richard McGrath. Please come. I don't want to celebrate Christmas. But Uncle, why not? I don't have to give you a reason why. Good day. I have a treat tomorrow. Goodbye, Uncle. Ebenezer turned to Mr. Cratchit, his place and stood very dryly. I suppose you'll be wearing the day off of work tomorrow, too. Hey, sir, you might bring me on a special dinner tomorrow night, and Christmas will be coming once a year. Well, if you want me to pay for a day when you're not working, then you better come in extra early the day afterwards. Yes, sir, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Cratchit left for home wishing Ebenezer a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Scrooge mumbled underneath his breath. I don't understand that man. His family is too poor to afford their Christmas dinner, and his son is crippled. He can't even walk without a crutch. What is he asking me so happy about? He must be crazy. That night, as Scrooge was unlocking his door, the knock was changed right before his eyes. Why, that looks like my old partner Jacob Marley, but he's been dead for many years. Scrooge went inside and prepared himself for bed. Just as he was falling asleep, all the bells in his house began clamoring. Stop it! Stop it! Just then, the cellar door flew open. It sounded as if someone were dragging a heavy train across the floor and up the stairs right outside the bedroom. I don't believe it. I won't believe it. Ghost walked right through his bedroom door and stood before him. His head was wrapped in bandages. His body was covered in chains. Ebenezer could not believe his eyes. I don't believe in you. The ghost raised his arm to let out a frightening cry. Scrooge covered his eyes and dropped to the ground in fear. Have mercy on me, dreadful spirit. What do you want from me? Many things. I am the ghost of your dead partner, not Jacob Marley. I am forced to wear these chains and wonders for the work for a rich and terrible person. But why? He should represent the time that I took down from the next rabbit, and I chose to think of myself instead. But why was I more dreaming? You are always a good businessman. The ghost bears the arms again, rattles the chains, and let out a loud round. Ugh! All I cared about was making money. I should have been kinder to others and... find the first ghost standing beside him. The ghost was small as a child, but had long white hair that flowed down his back like an old man. It was dressed in a gown in fierce light and held a sprig of holly in his hand. Uh, are you the first ghost that Marley told me about? I am. Who are you, and what are you? I'm the ghost of Christmas past. Christ, Ebenezer, talk with me. 
The ghost made its way towards the window. Ebenezer was afraid. A human might fall. That's why you're here, you're just lying. They traveled magically and found themselves standing on a country road surrounded by fields of snow. Do you know this place? Know this place. I was raised here. I used to play in these fields as a boy. The ghost noticed that a screen fell on his feet. Flat with me. They walked until they came to an old schoolhouse. It looked vacant from the outside. Let's look inside. Someone else got left behind. Scrooge saw himself as a small, small boy sitting by the fire on a He let out stop. <laughs> Take me away from here. They continued walking. This time they stopped in a large red house. Scrooge got excited. Why, this is where I had my first job. There's old Fezzy Wick himself. He was a great man. And that's me sitting next to him. I was just a young man back then. There shall be no more work tonight. It's Christmas Eve, everyone. The room began to instantly transform into a bright ballroom celebration. Completely with food, live music, and dancing. Who's that you're dancing with? Scrooge side. <laughs> that was, that's Belle. Wasn't she beautiful? We were in love. She wanted to marry me, but I, I told her I had to focus on making money first. She didn't understand me. She left me. Scrooge covered his face with his hand. Do you like to torture me? Please, I wish to see no more. Leave me, take me back, and please just stop haunting me. The ghost took him back to his bedroom and <laughs> I know Tiny Tim is unhealthy. Will he live? I see an empty seat at the table next Christmas and a card for the fireplace. Oh no, please say I can do something and change this. If there is no change in the kitchen, I think he will perish. Come, we have one more place to visit. The ghost took him to the Nipples Fair House. The friend and his family were inside and joined the Christmas feast. I invited Uncle Scrooge to the Oh, I do. I feel sorry for him. He's only playing himself. Come on, let's play a game of yes and no. I'm thinking of an animal. This animal is very grumpy and mean. It growls and grunts as it walks the streets of London. Is it a thing? Nope. Is it a bear? Nope. Is it a No. I think I know it. It's kind of close, Ha ha ha. You guys think me? He has a market. Christmas, wherever he is. And it's that too good. Spirit, you frighten me more than the others, but I hope to learn from you. 
I want to become a new man. Please show me what I need to see. Won't you speak to me? Spirit of Spruce to a Samaritan and Lily Grant of his death. When did he die? Last week, I believe. He was a very rich man. He was, but that money means nothing to him now. I feel sorry for him. Don't worry, he does not have a single friend to care that he is gone. But just think, he saved a lot of money by having such a cheap funeral. <laughs> Scrooge had a sinking feeling in his stomach. He trembled as he looked up into the tombstone and read the words, Ebenezer Scrooge. No, Spirit, no. I want to erase my name from the stone. I promise I will honor Christmas with my heart and keep the spirit alive with it. I will live with the past, present, and future, and I will not forget these lessons you have taught me. future and keep the spirit of these three alive with it. Scrooge ran to the window and called to a young girl that was passing by. Hey, my young lady, what day is it today? Today, why, it's Christmas Day, sir. So I haven't missed it. The spirits have been at all in one night. Do you see the prize turkey that's hanging over there in the butcher's window? You mean the one that's as big as me? Yes, that's the one. Please take this money and have it brought here to me. Of course, sir. Merry Christmas. I will have it delivered to Bob Cratchit's house. They won't know who sent it. They'll be so surprised. And then I must join my nephew for dinner. I'm so thankful I haven't missed Christmas this year. Scrooge spent the rest of the day celebrating. Scrooge arrived at his office earlier than this morning. He wanted to catch Bob Cratchit arriving late to play a joke on him. Mr. Cratchit, you are 18 and a half minutes late. I'm very sorry, sir. It won't happen again. I'll tell you what. I'm not going to stand for this any longer. That's why I'm going to raise your salary. Cratchit stood there in disbelief. Was Scrooge joking? Merry Christmas, Bob. Your salary is just the beginning. I want to start helping your family in any way I can. Whatever Tim needs, he will have it. Now put some coal in the fire. It's time to warm this place up. Scrooge was even better than his work. He did all that he promised and infinitely more. He spent the rest of his life sharing his wealth and giving good things for others. There's a saying he said for all of us too. One. Merry Christmas and God bless.